Hello and welcome back and today I'm going to be talking to you about the importance of thinning apples and thinning pears and I'm also going to just touch on the June drop which is what we're just coming to the end of now which is basically because the month of June is a very notoriously windy month just before I get started going to say I'm going from three videos a week to two videos a week next week or this week coming so I'll be uploading on Saturdays and Wednesdays and this is so I can build up a bank of videos so that when I go back to school or when I get life gets more back to normal I'll have enough videos stored so I can keep giving you good quality gardening content all through the year. So in my garden we've got quite a lot of fruit and what we grow is we've got about three apple trees and we've got two pear trees. So this one's got two pears on it this year and it's the first time we've had a pear so we're definitely not thinning this tree out this year we're just going to try and get two our first pears from it and from what they look like we think they're eating pears we can't actually remember because this is about 10 or 15 years old believe it or not and it had got badly attacked by canker in its earlier life so that's why it's so small but it actually looks quite nice and it's not shading my greenhouse too much it keeps it cool in the hot days and it also sort of protects it from the elements we've also got another pear tree there and it's got black dots all over the leaves which it's always had through its life and we're not sure why and we got some pears from that last year but they were definitely heating pears because they weren't very tasty to eat raw at all but in this month is the June drop because it's June obviously and what the June drop is is because it's a notoriously windy month what happens is the wind makes a lot of the fruit drop off and that's why you'll find a lot of fruit on the floor during the month of June and this is there's no reason to be alarmed with this it's a completely natural thing and it's basically natural thinning and if you find a lot on the floor don't go screaming oh no where are my apples gone or someone been going tugging them off because no it's the wind and I know Alfie my dog also likes to help thin out the low branches and then he chews into them and realizes they're far too sour for him to eat but the wind we take we get lose loads of apples to the wind which is actually a good thing because especially with eating apples you want to get the biggest apple as you possibly can and by thinning it out that's what this does and that's why I'm making this video today because now is about the right time to thin apples and the wind does it naturally but sometimes you have to step in and do it and what I generally thin to is about two apples per two to three apples per bunch or what some people do is especially with cooking apples ours are cookers but I like to I don't like to thin too much because it makes me feel panic um, but some people thin to about six to eight inches apart between each apple which I think is a bit too hard of a thinning but it works for some people but I will much prefer to do two to three apples per bunch because it means you get a lot of apples and they're, they're decent sized so down here this is a good example of what your floor under your apple tree will look like after the June drop and there's, as you can see there's lots of tiny little apples some of them bigger than others and there's no reason to panic about this because it's a natural thing as I said and it's just naturally thinning. So this tree I don't even need to thin because the wind's done it for me. Each bunch has about two to three and they're really big. This tree, we know, this tree's quite known in, oh, another one just dropped here. And what I do with these as well, I just leave them on the floor so they rot down and feed the soil for the tree to produce bigger, bigger fruits that are already on there. But this tree, it's known in our family for producing really big fruit in our garden and it was also quite badly affected by canker in its early life like that pear tree I was mentioning and as I was put some clips in it's really recovered quite well what we did was we cut all the infected branches off and we shaved all the, the bark back that had canker in it and it's really healed over well and I think it might have gotten an immunity to it because we haven't had it back in this tree for uh, since it all went so I reckon that there might be an immunity in this tree to it now because I haven't seen it on it in years and it's healed so well I'm actually quite happy with it. It sent new branches at the bottom which we did let grow because we were worried that because it was such so weak last year and the year before on the stem because there's quite a lot of bits eaten out of it from the canker we were worried that the top might fall over so we let the fresh branches come out but that's fine and um, it bears more apples so it's fine as long as it carries more food for us I'm happy with it 
and I'm now going to speak about the importance of thinning apples and this is why you should thin out apples if the wind hasn't done so for you and as you can see on this tree this is the exact same tree I was just next to but it's a different angle and these apples as you'll see are quite big and that's because the tree's known for being making big apples but what you should do is you should go through and any unhealthy looking apples you should go and you should take them out and that just saves energy for the plant basically so any plant apples that are a bit too small just take them out and this will protect see that's a good one good example so that was still growing but it would be taking energy from these bigger healthier apples so what I'll do is I'll just take those ones that are just a bit too small for my liking and I'm gonna take them off the plant and this as I said will give bigger apples and it might also give tastier apples um, there's quite a few on there because apples are quite sort of heavy on the plant really literally are heavy and that's why this branch is stooping over normally it'd be quite tall and that's another reason and the, another important thing to, with thinning is it stops your plants and your branches being under stress and bending over with all the weight of these apples it won't put as much stress on the plant and it won't risk the branches snapping and things as I've experienced before and I know you can do things like I've seen Hugh do it on uh, his videos where he makes he's got a coppiced piece of hazel a long bit of hazel and he puts a V in it and it supports the branch can't remember the exact name of that but you can do that but we don't really have any long bits of wood to do that with so what I'll do is I'll just thin it out and it gives us bigger apples and it means we don't have to worry about the branches stooping over too much I think I've gotten them all there so this tree should be fine now and now I'll move on to the next one I'll speak to you about more of the other points I want to cover about thinning in this video so I'd just like to make sure that you've gone down below hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon and clicked on all on the notifications and what this means is that you'll be notified every time I upload a video so that you can get great gardening tips two times a week so another reason that you'll want to thin your apple and pear trees and other fruit trees for example is because it means your harvest is a lot more easy to handle and before we started thinning our fruit because we only did it for the first time last year and it made a really big difference and before then we used to have loads and loads and loads of smaller apples and this was quite overwhelming to harvest and quite overwhelming to use so we had a lot of crumble and a lot of apple juice and cider and things but what we prefer is to have a lot bigger and a lot less of those bigger apples. And what this means is that you get the same amount of harvest, so the same mass, but it's in less quantity. So you've got them in smaller, more manageable sizes. So big apples, but small batches of them. And as you can see with this tree, this produces a lot on each bunch. So what you can do, and if they don't just pop off quite easily, you can use a clean pair of scissors or secateurs to do this. And for example, up here, there's a few too many apples there, I'd say, so I'll cut one off, I'll drop it on the floor, or I can give it to Alfie, but I don't think he likes how sour they are at the moment. And I just keep checking. Now, obviously, you won't be able to get to every single bunch, especially without a ladder, so if, you want, if you're that desperate to thin them out, you can get a ladder out. But I just want to do the ones I can reach, because that'll make a big difference anyway. So you always take the smallest or the weakest apple out because this leaves the bigger ones to get even bigger and what you do is you just do this on all of your trees all over them or all over where you can reach because don't risk going up a ladder just to thin the apples out unless you really want to you can just go around doing this it's quite a sort of, sort of therapeutic job to do really and this also gives you a good time to check for disease especially canker and in the UK it's quite a prevalent disease because we get quite damp conditions as you know Wales is known for being rainy and if you go around you can look for these red spores and the dying off branches and leaves and what you do is you just cut off the canker and you put it somewhere out of the way sealed or burn it straight away to prevent it spreading to any more apple trees. Ours seem to be okay at the moment we chop them off 
or the br infected branches whenever we come across them. So we're quite disease free in that case, so we just get the odd bit and then we just cut it off as soon as we see it. And I don't think there's any more. But I'll have a quick look around afterwards and if I find any I'll show you what it looks like so you know what, I, what to look out for when you're checking your apple trees. And this up here is what I mean by stooping down. As you can see this branch is really curling and that's because it's got apples at the bottom and all along its branch so that makes it stoop down. But this tree it sort of naturally goes like that even when there's not apples on it so I think that tree's naturally meant to be like that. But some of these ones on here it's funny because they have got a path going between these two trees here. That one's bigger than this one. I think this is more of a dwarf apple tree. But the path, I pruned it really well so that we didn't hit our head on any branches last year. And as soon as the apples start swelling up, you, I just can't get through there. And I'm quite tall, I'm nearly six foot, and I have to bend down quite a lot just to get through there. But now I'm going to go and I'm going to prune this, or thin out this tree here. And then I'll speak to you afterwards, if, especially if I find any canker. I can see some bits that might be with some brown leaves, but I'm not sure, so I'll check them in a minute. And I know I said I wasn't going to pick them up, but I have. And I'm going to give these the wormery because if I left them on the ground they might have attracted vermin or something like that so it's best just to get them off that ground and I'm going to put them in a sealed wormery where the worms can enjoy them and have them for their dinner tonight. So I found a bit that looks a little bit like canker so I'll show you now. It's on like a spur bit that the fruit would have grown from but I'm not sure if it actually is canker or not so I'm just going to check it out. I'm probably going to cut it off because it's not got much growth on it where it hasn't got any growth on it. So I'm just going to cut it off to the stem or to the trunk and hopefully that'll be it. But surprisingly there's actually nothing that I can see on the tree other than that one little bit which is quite good. And something that you can do if you want to try and help your small fruit tree, especially at the start of their life or if they're struggling to make fruit or if they've just overcome disease like this one has or a few years ago it had, what you can do is you can clear the weeds from below, below it and you can put a mulch of like a compost like this old potting compost will do and you can all manure and you just rip most of the roots out that you can you can even put a, a cardboard sort of collar around it if you cut one out and these are really good ways that you can help your fruit tree get the best help it can and I, I did mulch this two years ago and as you can see it's overgrown again but it's quite difficult to do by hand hopefully I'll be able to get most of them out and this will really help give it the nutrients and the boost that it needs especially as this is the first year it's growing fruit I've also been tipping on some worm fertiliser, worm compost from my wormery and this is another great way of doing it is just feeding them with liquid feeds but as I said in a previous video, feeding it a liquid feed is like eating a banana, it's quick release. Feeding it a compost, like I'm about to, is, there's an ant's nest down there. Feeding it compost is like eating porridge, it's a much more prolonged thing. So I'm currently just going to, I think I might just put the compost straight on actually, because there's a lot of ants there and I don't want to get bitten or anything. So I'll just put that on. This isn't a huge amount, but whenever I get any more, I'll just put more on. And you can do a lot of a bigger thing around it if you want. But this is all that I've got at the moment, compost at hand. And this is the only tree I've done it with at the moment. And I might do it with more of them the rest later on in the year. But that's what, all I'm going to do for today. Hopefully that will kill off some of the weeds as well. And I think it looks a bit better as well. And if you can find any good complementary plants for things like pears and apples, you can also plant them in this little bed that you've got around it. But try not to do a common mistake, which is called a mulch mountain, which is where if you put a mulch around it like here, if you mound it up too much, it can be bad. So if it doesn't rot down, just wait until it completely rots down and goes down. 
then put another thin layer on like I have today. Because if it keeps building up and up and up, it will rot the stem or the, rot the trunk of the tree. And this isn't very good because it can bring in disease and it can just generally kill the plant off. Uh, another good thing to do is, what I've done here is I've cut most of the lower branches off. It still tries to send them out, but if you keep cutting them off you'll get more at the top, which is better looking, I think, on mine, and it also sends all the strength up to the top where the, most of the fruit will be. And I know thinning out can be a very, very counterintuitive thing to do. You're taking away apples and pears and things like, and fruit that you could be eating, and you're taking it and you're putting it in the compost or on the ground which is, I know, a counterintuitive, as I said, but what it does then is it gives you bigger, better harvests, which means you just need to take that sacrifice and just move on from it. Let the apples get bigger, and then you'll have bigger, tastier, and maybe even more apples, or just bigger apples, which is much better. And another tip I want to say is to, what you should do is you should thin out the eating apples less than the cooking apples, so the cooking apples need to be really hardly thinned back. So the eating ones tend to be smaller and more of them, where the cooking ones there's less of them but they're bigger. I hope this video helped you think a bit more deeply about whether you want to thin your apples or not, because I didn't like, used to like thinning them until last year, when I realised they give you a lot bigger apples and a lot sort of better apples, better shapes and a lot easier to deal with when you harvest them and either juice them, put them in cakes, crumbles, whatever you want to do with them. So, yeah, I hope this really did make you think about it because some people always say, oh no, I wouldn't ever cut my apples back because that gets rid of harvest. But really, it doesn't because it gives you more harvest in a way because it gives you bigger apples rather than lots of tiny little apples. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Now let's go and treat the worms because they love at the end of every video. Whenever I have anything to, to give to them, they all start getting really excited. So let's go. Oh, I can hear them getting excited now. They can hear their bucket of food coming. I'm just gonna take the cover off and then they'll be able to have their dinner. They love their food, these new worms especially because I had to buy some new ones. They really love it. Let's just take this off. They're not by the surface yet, they've all run away, they're a bit camera shy. I'll just put all these apples and things in then. And I'll put some newspaper over them later. They'll all be running up now, going up the stairs. There we are, I hope you enjoyed this little bit at the end. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it?